Kia have just revealed the EV9, right? It's it's not exactly cheap, but the thing is, Toyota is saying, you know what, Kia, we're looking at the EV9, but we are going to make a vehicle that's almost the same size, but we're going to make it even better than the Kia EV9. Here's everything we know about the new Toyota BZX5. Not the fur. This is not the version 4, which we have today. This is a bigger version called the 5. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to see you. Thank you for your support. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, I'll put a link in the description below. So right now, the Toyota BZ4X, that's available in a bunch of countries worldwide, not yet on sale here in Australia, but it's relatively expensive. In many places worldwide, the BZ4X actually costs more than a Tesla Model Y. However, Toyota will manufacture the new BZ5X, which is a seven seat or three row upper large electric SUV, and really a direct competitor to things like its own vehicles, the Toyota Land Cruiser, the Toyota Kluger, the Prado, and many other vehicles like the Ford Everest, but they're gonna manufacture it in the United States and Japan. So there'll be two different places that they'll be making this vehicle. And Toyota did reveal this vehicle a couple of years ago, but apparently they have confirmed that it will now be basically coming out in most places worldwide in 2025. But the good news is here that for you guys in the United States, it should qualify for some level of EV incentives because it will be manufactured at Toyota's new factory in Kentucky. That factory, Toyota, is going to invest 12 billion US dollars and it's going to have 10, I mean, 10 battery production lines. It's going to be a big factory and it will in fact be Toyota's first real serious attempt at EVs. I mean, today the BZ4X, right? It's not even made on a dedicated EV production line. So it's really a compromised car. It doesn't have an EV dedicated platform. It's not built using structural battery packs. It's not built using gigapresses. But the new BZ5X, everything will be different about that vehicle. The BZ5X will actually be one of 10 new electric vehicles that Toyota plan on launching around the world over the next couple of years. Those include a sports car and an electric pickup truck. Now, I'm not really too sure on the details of those when they're coming or if they even will come, but it looks like this is 100% certain. What's not so certain are Toyota's other claims, such as solid state batteries, the ability to charge Toyota's EVs in 12 minutes, um, range of 600 miles plus using small battery packs, lithium ion phosphate batteries that are industry leading and that make batteries from CATL and BYD look obsolete and really not very good at all. Um, other claims from Toyota that include using gigapresses and structural battery packs, now, some of that may be true. Some of that may be just Toyota Bluster. But either way, it looks like the BZ5X will be a significant improvement based on the fact that it will likely use a gigapress machine, which Toyota have apparently ordered. And it enables Toyota to change the, the manufacturing of this vehicle, make it much more streamlined. Right now, the rear section of the Toyota vehicle, uh, basically the rear section of the BZ4X, it's 88 parts. They've got to weld those together, glue them together, put them together. The new version uh, will be one part using a gigapress machine. This will save around three hours of work. It will actually be manufactured in only about 20 seconds versus three hours. It will also make the vehicle more structurally rigid and significantly lighter. I mean, the BZ4X, it's heavier than a Tesla Model Y, but it's significantly smaller. This shows you the big advantages of manufacturing products to, the way that Tesla does. And Toyota said the same. They said, well, the way we saw Tesla making the Model Y, it was, they said in their own words, manufacturing genius. And so Toyota have made the wise decision to copy it. The BZ5X was actually previewed by the BZ large SUV concept in December of 2021, two years ago. That was sitting beside a Lexus version of the same vehicle. Now, this is the concept, but pretty much this is the vehicle you're going to see in the real world. And the great thing about this is that I think it's a really good looking vehicle. I mean, 
I'm not a huge fan, to be honest, of Toyota, but I really like this vehicle. One thing it probably won't get in some markets, almost certainly won't get, is the lack of mirrors. You can see there's almost no mirror there. The vehicle uses a digital mirror, a little bit like some of Kia and Hyundai's EVs today. Some markets that will be possible, it's legal in those places, in others it's not. So it really depends on what market you're in or whether or not you get that feature. So what's the advantage of a digital mirror? Well, the big advantage is that it'll give you more range. Now having mirrors on your car, you'll find even just folding your mirrors in, if you do this while you're driving, it's not legal, but if you do it, you'll find that you'll get a few percent more range. So it's definitely a benefit to having a digital mirror. It does take some time getting used to though, I've heard. However, as you can see here by this speculative rendering from carscoops.com, the look of the Toyota vehicle here is kind of distinct. It has a hammerhead shark face, which Toyota have used this kind of concept, this design across all their different vehicles that they've revealed over the past couple of years. And they have a lot of concept cars, but apparently this one is not a concept, it's the real deal. What's the size? Well, it's gonna be around 197 inches long or five meters long. So almost identically sized to the Kia EV9. Now the Kia EV9 starts at around just under 60,000 US dollars, tops out at about 90,000 US dollars. Pricing is very similar in other markets worldwide. However, Toyota believe that by the time this vehicle comes out in 2025, they will have better technology. Now today they do not. The EV9 has far better technology in it then Toyota's BZ4X. Fast charging for the BZ4X is 150 kilowatt. Relatively slow compared to the EV9's 350 kilowatt. But Toyota say their new EV in 2025 to be built in the US and Japan will have much better technology than today. It'll also have some advanced safety systems. Unfortunately, Toyota haven't actually revealed details in terms of motors or actual drivetrains, battery packs they're gonna be using but it's likely they'll come with about a 100 kilowatt hour size pack in the longer range version of this EV. Plus, it'll probably come in front wheel drive and all wheel drive versions like the BZ4X. The other thing to keep in mind is it will be produced in the US, but Toyota will do something interesting. They will likely, from what we're hearing, put a Subaru badge on this car, rebadge it, maybe change a couple of little body panels on the car and Subaru will have their own EV to sell to Americans as well. So there'll be a Subaru version, a Lexus version and a Toyota version, all of the same car, same platform, same motors, same batteries, but there'll be some slight changes between the three. Of course, the Lexus version will cost the most. The Subaru and Toyota versions will probably cost a similar amount. Now, if you're interested in the Lexus version, um, it should come out around 2025 as well. Apparently, the time frame for the Lexus version and the Toyota version are also are both in 2025. However, of course, the Lexus version is said to come with a more luxurious and technologically advanced interior, along with the potential for a higher powered dual motor setup. So it's possible the Lexus version will get more power. Now, unfortunately, that's about all the information that I can share with you because that's about all we know so far. But when we do find out more info, which we should within the next few months, I'll be sure to keep you updated. Make sure you stay subscribed and um, have a great day. Bye-bye.